You're, 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 <laughs> hope y'all love that intro. Um, today I wanted to talk about Dang on Ropa. <laughs> not Dang on Ropa. I want to talk about not giving it to despair, but we're going to talk through it. Do Dang on Ropa, you know, um, and I'm going to give you kind of a s example of what it would mean to give in to despair and why I think you should always have hope. And I think that what we see today especially um, now today, I think what society wants us to do is give up hope. And I understand that we're all human beings, but you got to understand there are people behind the scenes who want us to give in to hope and despair. Okay, I'm not trying to go on a conspiracy theory, but you know, we we have to know at this point that there is some truth behind, um, there is somebody controlling the behind the scenes stuff, right? Um, and I think at this point, um, what they're trying to get us to do is give up hope. I want to say one thing I, I, I watched earlier, right? Um, I was watching a video earlier, and it was talking about, um, it was these young ladies, and they, they were asked a certain question, and they pretty much none of them gave any kind of hope or anything in the video, right? They pretty much just uh, said that they have no hope. <clears> Hold <throat> on, oh, let me start this up. So pretty much they said that they had no hope and it got me thinking that's the point they want us to believe that there is no hope in this world that everything is going to go to ruin as america's probably going to fall apart the whole world's going to fall apart at some point i don't think they do this I don't, I don't know how they do it in other countries but i can say here that they for sure got us to that point where they're, we're starting to feel like we don't have any kind of hope and it's sad to see. It, it really is sad to see. But I want to say this. And I'm going to give his story. You know, whether you believe or not, you know, or just 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 hear me out. Okay. First, I want to talk about Danganronpa. So Danganronpa is a video game um, that talks a lot about um, hope and despair. That's pretty much the underlying thing between all of it. Pretty much it, it tries to... Pretty much what happens in this world is they create a world where people feel like they have absolutely no hope. So to get these young teenagers in Danganronpa 1 and 2, 3, um, with the uh, the girls, Ultimate Despair Girls, I believe it's called, um, and then Danganronpa 3, right? What they're pretty much trying to do is show the whole world, all these teenagers, right? They put them in a situation and tell them, hey, the only way to get out of the situation, right? They get, Let's say that they, one, one of them, they got put on an island. The other one, they were in a school, Okay. They erase their memories. That way, they have no basis or context to go off of anything, right? And so pretty much, they try to prove to the world that if you put anyone in a place where they feel no hope, they will ultimately give into despair. And for these children, it's giving into, you know, taking each other's lives. So that's the ultimate despair that they're trying to convey to the entire world. And the world can see even the people who they thought that they could have the most hope in. These kids that went to this place called Hope Academy, they thought that these these kids that they could put the most hope in, they end up also falling into despair. And so this whole world is pretty. So these kids giving into despair pretty much is what ensues 
chaos, right? Um, it's a long story, but nonetheless, do we not see that today? That if we, we, what they try to do is tear down every single piece of hope that you could possibly have, whether that's hoping that, uh, hoping the new generation, that's hoping the old generation, that's hoping people, that's hoping our identity, that's hoping our sexuality, that's just hoping all these things. They try to show you images of mass shootings and all these kind of stuff. So you eventually will lose hope that the world can get better. And then eventually you will give in to despair and be like, okay, you can have it all. Whoever that may be, whoever that may be that you're giving into, right? <sighs> Let me tell another story. Okay. I'm sure y'all know the story of Judas, right? Judas is the one who betrayed Jesus Christ, right? Now, some people, people think that when he gave Jesus over to the uh, Pharisees, right? And gave him over, that that is what ultimately did him in. No, it's not. Because he denied Jesus in that moment by giving him over, but so did Peter, who y'all remember denied Jesus three times, right? So Judas, there's, there's two different types of people, Judas and Peter, both who had denied Jesus. Judas, who could have been forgiven, easily could have been forgiven. Even at one point, he knew what he had did was wrong. And he even decided you know, tried to give the money back, right? But eventually, Judas was so distraught, he refused to give the grace that the God was given. And this, instead of living with his mistake and living with that and turning back to God, what he ended up ultimately doing is turning into despair, right? Turning into despair and saying, there's no hope. I give up. I'm the worst person on the earth. And we know how that story ends. If you don't, go read it up in the Bible. And then you have Peter, who ultimately did, who denied Jesus when he had the bold chance to do it. But when he was given the opportunity to take the grace and be forgiven, instead of turning to despair and saying, no, I'm the worst person ever, I might as well give in to it. He turned the other way and went back to God. All I'm saying is that in your life, in my life, there is times that I wanted to give in to despair. And there was a point in my life I did. I remember making that decision. I remember thinking to myself, you know what? Um, hold on, let me uh, adjust this microphone. I remember one time thinking to myself, you know what? I give in. It, it, I was giving into porn. I was giving into my addiction. I was giving into being this guy. I, I completely abandoned myself because at one point, I kind of started feeling like there was no more hope of even trying to fight my addictions. And so what I did is I gave in to despair. Not ultimately. But eventually I gave in. I said, you know what? There is no hope. I will never get better. And I gave in to all of it. And I think that is what the ultimate goal is for all of us. We all are going to come down this career path. A career path. We're all going to come down this path, this fork in the road where life is awful. Okay. People have what life. There's people who have the worst life ever. Right. And there's people who have great lives. But either way. You're going to come to a fault. You're going to come to a fork in the road. Right. There's people who have a ton of money, people who are very wealthy, and even they come down to this decision. Is all this stuff I have meaningless? Is everything I have even worth anything? And they will make a decision. They will either turn into to, to despair and be like, well, whatever. I'm just going to spend money on whatever and try to do whatever. I'll just give in to my addiction, my money, or whatever it is. And I'm just going to live life and take all that the world has to offer and try to find this true happiness. And maybe it ultimately leads to them doing something tragic to themselves or it ends with them doing something evil or doing something, uh, scamming somebody else or doing something there. They ultimately turn into money being this and everything. Or they can turn to be like, you know what? I think there's more hope in this world. I understand I have a lot of money and I will use this money to do these certain things that I would to believe would be the right thing to do with all this money. Right. I understand I can have this kind of life over here, but I don't want to give in to that. I'm going to give in to hope and give other people hope that there's more to life than money. There has to be. Now, if you're a person who's dealing with tragedy, and let's just get into it. Um, some things, these are going to be tough to talk about, but there's abuse. Um, there's abuse. There's things that happen to people. There's tragic losses. Um, and there's things that just happen to children and things that happen to us adults that are just awful. And what ultimate, and sometimes we do it. There's things that probably some of us have done in this life that we would consider 
evil, monstrous, disgusting. And even then, and I know this is hard to think about, but even then, the people, even you, if you're listening and you've done something you absolutely regret. It was evil. It was, it was terrible. You, it was disgusting. You know it was terrible. You have two paths to turn down. I don't care who you are. You can either turn into despair and say, I'm an evil person. I'm a terrible person. I'm going to give in to everything, everything that I believe is bad, whether that means taking your life or taking somebody else's life or just giving into your addictions fully, falling into a dark, dark, dark world until it's all over. Or you can believe that there's hope for you still. You can take, you can take this route, find a new hope even though you have done something terrible. And that may mean spending the rest of your life in prison and all these kind of things, but you can still turn to the left, turn to the left or right. It depends on how you're looking at the fork in the road. Nonetheless, you can turn to hope and be like, I understand what I've done and I can move on to be a better person from this point on. I don't have to give in to despair. Or you're a person who has had something done to you. You have two routes you can take. You can say, well, this person did this to me. I can't get over it. I'm going to do anything I can to numb the pain. Whether that be through drugs, alcohol, whether that be through sex, whether that be through relationships, you decide I'm going to give in to despair because what it was done to me is unforgivable and I cannot be redeemed. I cannot be cleansed from the dirt that has been put up on me. And you turn to despair or you could turn to hope. You know, you hear this a lot with women who were in, um, Women who were um, forced into pornography, human trafficking, trafficking, and sex trafficking, you hear women who go into that. They, they talk about some of them ultimately, they turn to despair, you know? And there's some that turn the other way and say, you know what? Even though I have a hard time licking somebody, I have a hard time, I have anxiety, I have crippling panic attacks. I, I, I have a hard time even trusting anybody because when I was younger, I got trafficked into this pornography world. I can't see sex as what it used to be. I can't have the intimacy I would love to have, but they still go, you know what? But I'm going to try to help the next young lady. I'm going to, I'm going to have to fight this for the rest of my life, but I'm going to turn to hope and believe that one day I can get better. And those are the women you see in interviews, not all of them do interviews, obviously, but those are some of the women you see in interviews and those are the women who, who can give you a new hope saying that you don't have to die in this life of prostitution or being a stripper. For my men, you don't have to die in this life of being a gangbanger. You don't have to die in this life of being a drug addict. You don't have to die in this life of just being a person who is told from a young age that you're a monster or you're this or that. You don't have to turn into a world of violence. You can turn to the way of hope and believe that you can get out of that life. Instead of turning to despair. There is a point in the TV show. I mean the TV show. This video game. And I'll tell you both. Well I'll spoil it if I. I'll spoil the game for you. If I explain to you exactly how it ends. But let me just say this. In both instances at the very end of the game. If you ever watch it. At the very end of the game. They, they are always going to be faced. Do they want to give in to despair? Or do they want to give in to hope? When they all figure out what was really in this you really have to watch the game but they all will eventually find out something that is so crazy that it they are left with no choice but to either give into despair don't believe or believe it comes down to that and I, I think that's so beautiful because that's also what it is for us once we realize what we finally end up realizing whether that we finally see the world for what it truly is, what's really happening. We can either choose to believe that and look towards hope, or we can choose not to believe and live in this fog and take the route of despair. Give in. Just be like, well, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in that. I'm just going to whatever. I don't care about people. I don't care about this. I'm going to go home and play my video games, or I'm going to go home and do whatever I got to do. And then I'm going to go to work tomorrow. I don't care about anything. You know, giving it to despair doesn't always mean that ultimately you end up leading to a tragic life. Giving it to despair also can mean giving up on everything, meaning you don't give it anything a try. At this point, you've given so much into despair. You pretty much see your life as useless or you can see your life as I'm not going to care about anybody. I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to necessarily try to be a bad person, bad, but I'm not going to try to be a good person either. If somebody is in trouble, I'm staying out of the way. If there's something that needs to be talked about or I believe is wrong, 
I'm staying out the way. You live your, it's, it's those people who say this right here. You do you, I'm going to do me. You do you, I'm going to do me. Those are the people who ultimately end up giving into despair. Because people who are just like, you do you, I'll do me, are people who are saying, no matter what you do, I do not care. As long as it doesn't affect me as an individual, I do not care. I don't care if you do this. I don't care what you do to the children. I don't care what you do with this. They won't stand on anything unless something is like monsters. Maybe they may give a voice, but they may not, they, or they might disagree with it in their head, but they'll never speak on it. They'll never ruffle any feathers. They will just be like, I do not care. I'm going to live a life of peace. Ooh. That is something that people really, um, even myself, I mentioned this in one of my videos a long time ago, where I was talking about finding peace. That's the issue. So many people try to find peace, but they think peace means not causing any feathers to get ruffled or any chaos, right? The people who say they're trying to find peace, not not everybody. I mean, when somebody says they're trying to find peace in God, I can I can find a different route on that, obviously. But some people who are saying they're trying to find peace, and I I, I hate to always go back to this, but I, I want to talk about the stoner community one more time. As a person who's in the stoner community, I'm not a stoner, but I do follow the community. I see that a lot. I just want to find peace. If you mess up my peace, you're out of my life. Or you hear that in other circles of, if you mess up my peace, you're out of my life. What they truly mean is, I don't want to deal with anything. I have given up hope of trying to fight against stuff. I just want to, for the stoners, I just want to be high. I want to wake up high. I don't want to feel nothing. I just want to be in this world of bliss. And for people who aren't trying to use drugs to do it, those are the people who just avoid everything. They stay out of conflict. They don't speak up on anything, not in their own community, not in their own families, not to their friends. They just keep it all to themselves and they go home and they live their lives and they think that's true peace. I think there is a point in your life where you may need to take a break. And I'm not saying you need to be this person who's vocal. You don't need to be on Twitter and all that because maybe you can just be vocal with your family or just teach your friends or just speak up where you can. Um, and I'm not saying everybody's going to speak up, but there, there shouldn't get to a point where your life where the only reason you're choosing not to, there's different, there's, it's a difference if the opportunity to speak is never given to you, right? You're just one of those people who doesn't have that gift of speaking. Maybe you don't, that's just not who you are and that's not what you needed. Maybe you're, maybe just your community involvement is enough. You don't need to speak, but if you're choosing to stay out of the, that and you do have that gift or you do have the ability to speak up on something and the only reason you choose not to do it not it's not because you're not educated in it not because you don't know about it because you don't want conflict in your life ever you don't want to feel anybody no suffering no nothing that's not how you should live that's giving into despair that's just giving into the chaos you're the type of person who would let chaos ensue because you wouldn't do nothing to stop it once again going back to thing on ropa that's what ends up happening in the world right because people chose despair. It's not that they're necessarily going out and doing all these evil things. Those are the more extreme people in the despair. But what ends up happening is the people who, other people just watch the world burn. They don't even attempt to try to stop it. They don't stand up for anybody. They literally watch people do the craziest things. And I'm not gonna explain exactly what happened, but they, they, they watch people do the craziest thing and they just stand by because they've given up hope. They stand by and cry. They stand by and just, shrug their shoulders they say as long as you don't as long as you don't do that to me i'm cool just leave me out of it those kind of people there's different ways to give in the despair whether that be not caring not standing up for anything watching chaos ensue just thinking only about you or ultimately going the tragic route which may be giving ultimately into taking your own life taking somebody else's life or not accepting the grace that's been given to you I just felt like I want to talk about that because I have come to those crossroads of wanting to give into despair. And it, when I tell you guys at the end of my streams, what I, what, I, what I always say, like, hey, don't forget to pray for me and um, I'll pray for you. You pray for me because off this camera, I have my issues, too. It's the same thing. I don't want to give into despair. It is hard for me. I live in a place where there's not a lot of contact with people. It is very hard not to give in to despair. My wife, she she works at a place where she sees a lot of college students, right? You know, 
So she gets to see a lot of college students. She, she gets to interact with a lot more people than I do. I don't get this. I, I work with children, so I don't really ever get to see a whole lot of adults, you know. So I mainly talk to myself or you guys. And it's hard not to give in to wanting to be exciting, have this exciting life, be in, like living in a big city and um, getting to go bowling and doing this and doing that. So when you live in a place where all that stuff's not available, what do you want to give in to? The internet, porn, you want to give in to drugs. You just want something to give you something. And that's why I tell you guys, please pray for me because I ultimately myself, I don't want to give in to despair because it's hard not, not to want to just give in to, oh, let me go get high again so I can feel something. It is hard not to, um, it, it's, <laughs> it's just hard, man. It really is just tough on me mentally. It's probably one of the, these last three years have been mentally the hardest three years of my life, especially this last year, especially with all the anxiety of me not using drugs anymore. Even while I was using drugs, life was hard. So this has been mentally draining and I've wanted to give in and I almost did. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was on the road of giving in to despair. And I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna say it was me. God saved me. I, I have to be honest about that. Jesus Christ saved me. Ultimately, that's what did it. Because I was headed down the road of despair. And I got saved. How, now everybody's experience is different in life. Okay. I'm not trying to push anything on you. I'm just giving my story, which my camera would figure out what it's doing. Sorry for that. <laughs> Ultimately, God saved my life and kept me from falling into despair. And he did that through people, too. It would, like, he did it through me, through an experience. But he, he also put people in my life that were there when I needed them. You know, I went to meetings and stuff like that. And ultimately, I didn't give in. And uh, that's why I still don't give in today to the drugs. Um, can't give in to porn. You can't. It's so easy, guys. It's so easy to just give in. Just look up a video and give in. Thank you, thank you. Um, but anyway, that's my lesson for today. Remember, these lessons don't come from me, man. They, they don't, you know. They come from him up above. But um, I try not to get too much into that because, you know, I try to be, you know, logical. But, I mean, not logical. I try to, you know, stay there. But nonetheless, I want to say this. Don't give in to despair, man. Don't give in. Ultimately, it's your choice, though. That's the beauty of life. But whatever choice you do make, know that you will have to deal with the consequences of that choice. Giving in to despair does not mean freedom. I want to say that last thing. There is a very big difference between relief and freedom. What some people think is when they give in to their addiction, when they give in to porn or they give in to sex or they give in trying to live any kind of moral life, they think that they are breaking the chains and they're now free to do what they want. No, that is called relief. It is a difference. You no longer have to fight it. And so you feel like you're free. And the worst, <laughs> the worst slaves in the world are the ones that think they're free. Wouldn't you hate to be a slave and you don't even know you're trapped in a cage? That's all I got to say on that. <laughs>